Alright guys, I want to do a little video on capacitors, what I carry in my truck. Uh, I'm going to try to explain to some of the young guys different techniques with capacitors and what capacitors do. And uh, hopefully it comes out okay. So basically, you get different kind of capacitors. This would be a single capacitor, like for a, a fan. Screw, um, you know, condenser fan motor or an air handler motor inside um, you got different microfarads okay you got the 370 and you got the 440 now if it's a 440 you have to go back with a 440 BAC if it's a 370 you can either put a 370 in there or a 440 now there's different uh, microfarads usually start from three I got four I got a bunch of fives in here um, seven and a half are common tens tens uh, not so common but the, you have to have them twelve and a halfs um, then you jump up to fifteens fifteen microfarad twenty microfarad these are all singles um, then you go 25, 30, 35, go all the way up. I gotta, I gotta get some more of these, but these are all singles. It's a 55 here. This is a single. So you call um, a run capacitor. Okay. And here's a, here's an oval, but here's a 45-5 oval, and that's a 40, 440. Right, you'll see right on here. It'll say fan. We'll go to the fan. The common is the common, and then recip would be the compressor. This is what they call a dual run capacitor, permanent split capacitor. Okay, now I got all sizes. I go from these are the these are the most common ones I have in the truck. These are this is a 30-5, 35-5, 40-5. Forty-five dash five. Then I go um fifty dash five. These are sixties. Sixty dash five, and then I got the eighty dash five. Now, if for some reason I come across, you know, um, you know, say a forty, a forty dash seven point five, I'd have to make one up out of this, which I'm going to show you how to do that after. And also, um, for the rods and the reams. The fans are three, so you gotta. These are very common. I gotta stock some more. Use like a 35 dash three and a 50 dash three. Okay. <clears throat> now on the hot stock kits, um, I'm gonna explain that to you too. There's five two ones, which are very good, and these are good hot stock kits. Up north here, where I'm at, these Sebco's work okay. I don't have a problem using the Sebco. Some of the guys down south say these don't work so good down there. Well, up north where I'm at, uh, I usually don't have a problem throwing a Sebco on there. That's going to give it an additional uh, extra boost to help it start. Sometimes you have a you know a brand new system where you put in, uh, you know, with this type of capacitor, dual run capacitor, and it won't start. If I yeah, own it all out and everything's fine, I'll try to put a hot stock kit. And also, when the system gets old, sometimes the compressor won't kick over. You can put a hot stock kit in there, and sometimes it will work. Get a little bit more life out of the compressor. I'm going to show you how to test these things. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do parallel. Do capacitors in series to get different readings also. All right, now you have to get a meter that reads microfarads, okay? And if you look at this dual run capacitor, you'll see one lug's got two spades. This one has three spades. That one has four spades. The common will always have the four spades. The compressor will have the three, and the fan will have the two. Now on this particular unit, it's a 35-5 microfarads. Okay. Now what I do is I made up a little chart. 
I was always taught minus five or, or plus ten is good. So I did this on my little my little calculator. If it's a three, I go by my little chart. Say if I'm looking for five microfarads, if it's below that 475, the capacitor needs to be changed. If it's above that, it needs to be changed. So this little chart I bring along with me just to make my life easier. I don't have to try to do the calculations out in the field. I could just look at this little chart. I go all the way up to um, 70 microfarads, which I probably need to do the 80. But I got this little chart. All right, so this is a 35.5. We're going to check it. Now, with a capacitor, if you ever see it and it's bulged on the top, it's bellied up or it's bellied up on the bottom, someone says if you do a rock test, if you can rock it, it's probably no good. You need to check it, but on a visual inspection, sometimes these things will explode, or you could check. If it's puffy, most of the time it's not any good. So what you do is you get your meter, you set it on microfarads, put one lead on the common, one lead on the fan, and we need five microfarads. So if it's a five microfarad, we're going to be within that range, and we're in that range. So this capacitor is good on the fan side. Okay. So let's check it on. Should be a 30. We're 30.7. So we're within that range on the 30. We're good. These are all new capacitors, so it should all be good. But I always check them. You never know. All right, so now on a hot stock kit like this, if you're going to use this Sebco, all you have to do on this is, once it's all wired and everything, you just put one of these leads on common, one of these leads on compressor, and what this, this is going to give the compressor a boost to help it start. You got the three wire ones. Okay, with the relays, these, these are good. Hot stock kits are two wire. These both are two wire hard stock kits. But the five two ones are five wires. I don't have any with me, but them are good also. They got a they got a relay. These got a resistor that's supposed to drop out on the inside. Uh, like I said, I will use these in a pinch. Some guys don't like them. I haven't had an I've had a couple of them explode on me, but for the most part they're not they're not too bad. Alright guys, I got a 35 and a 5 here. So you need a 35.5 and you don't have it in a truck. So do one right here for your outside condenser and you get 35.5 and you don't have it. And what you can do is you can get a 30 and a 5. The 30 is going to run to the compressor. The 5 is going to run the fan. Now what you need to do is you need to jump out the commons, which you see I put that jumper across on a common. Okay. And then this is the 35. I got a microfarad. We're going to check check this one all right 35 and then the five so what you'd have to do is you'd have to put a jumper across the common and then you'd feed your common to, to one side of that and then the jumper would, 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 would feed both across you know your compressor would go here and your fan will go here. You'd have to strap that with some plumbing strap in the cabinet good. Now, a lot of guys down south say that this is a better system than that. Uh, I agree with that. You've got more more area here. This These capacitors banked up like this will probably outlast that capacitor in my experience. I've changed a lot more of these than I have if I have them doubled up. That's just what I think about it. But, you know, I, I usually go back with what I have here. Uh, if I don't have that in the truck, I'll go with something like this. Something like this I might use, um, you know, if I come across something that's a 3 and I don't have a 3, or I don't have a 7.5 for the fan, I would probably do a setup like this to get me by. Because, um, you know, some of these 7.5s on the fan are common on certain units, but not so much up my way. And the threes, the reds and the reams, uh, the three for the fan is very common. So this is another another way of doing it. All right, guys, I got two twenties here. Now this is in parallel. It's very important. You see how this is wired. This is parallel. Okay, you got two twenties, and you're gonna want to make a forty with the two twenties. Okay. Got to put it this way, 
and this way and I should be able to get my 40 with the 220s on parallel like that there we go that's a parallel this way and that way and jump them off you, you add in two you got two 20s to make a 40 okay all right guys I got a five and a seven and this is in series five and a seven in series will give you the three microfarads I've never really done this, but um, you can do it in a pinch. That'll give you a three. That's the series. Um, oh, it seems kind of a waste to use two capacitors, you know. But that'll get you out of a pinch if you need to do that. That's the series right there. And it'll only be, you know, it won't be no higher than the lowest capacitor. The number will never be no higher than the lowest capacitor. There's another one in series. This is a 10 and a 5. Okay? Just above 3. That one would still work too. If you needed a 3, you could use a 10 and a 5. To give you the 3. In series. I said it'll never it'll never be higher than the lowest capacitor. Another thing I want to say about capacitors, whenever you're working on the capacitors, you want to make sure you got your disconnect power shut off, power shut off to the unit. And if you're gonna you need to discharge the capacitor, you just take a screwdriver after all the wires are pulled off, obviously. And you just hit you know, just ground it out and they'll discharge the capacitor. Because this thing will hold a charge. It acts like a battery. A capacitor will hold a charge that acts like a battery. And uh, if that capacitor is dead open line and it's not working, the fan or the, the compressor is not going to start. How that works is electricity goes in, in and out of the, the capacitor is how it works. I was always taught. That's how it works. Your electricity goes in and out of the capacitor. So it acts like a battery, and it gives the it gives a place for the electricity to, to come in and out, and it gives a boost to start the motor. It gives it a little zap to get it started. You'll find a lot of times you'll come up to a, um, a unit, and you'll hear it eh, trying to start a compressor. The capacitor's bad. You know right off the bat, before you even pull the covers off, the capacitor's bad. Yeah, guys, so this is just a basic teaching video on capacitors. Nothing special. Um, it's more or less for the new guys that aren't in Iraq. A lot of the guys have been in the trade a lot, a lot of years. They know all this stuff. So, you know, it's it's for it's for the young techs coming up in the trade that are out there working. You get a feel for what's going on. You get a little, a little bit of background and knowledge. You know, it might help them in a pinch. So that's the reason why I do these videos. And, um, you know, I get some pretty good feedback on the teaching videos. I got, you know, quite a few likes and stuff on them, so I might, you know, I've been asked to do some, and I'm, I'm going to try to do, do them here and there, whatever I feel led to do, I'll do, and, you know, I might have missed a couple of things from the season text, but, you know, it is what it is, none of us, none of us are perfect, you know, none of us are super techs, but none of us are super techs, we'll say that, every day is a school day, remember that, every day is a school day. And if yeah, if you arrive, then you know so fucking great. Let's uh, let's see you let's see you see your super tech videos. We all need to learn your your super techniques. <laughs>